Welcome to the School of Wordcraft and Wordmancy. This is Feedback Frenzy. Hello, welcome to Writer Greg's School of Wordcraft and Wordmancy. It is time for another Feedback Frenzy. We're going to be uh, critiquing content that was submitted at our form at wgc.bz slash submit, where it's either going to be 1,500 words of fiction or a world-building article, as we are doing today with uh, Kitoipoi and uh, back to the world's world of Wizard Peaks and Ta- Tolinos. And th- so this is uh, an article about individuals in the world of Wizard Peaks. And I believe this is for a... Let me just scroll. Entry for On the Shoulder of Giants, a competition over at worldanvil.com. Okay, so let's start out. We're going to zoom out a little bit. I'm taking your edits directly into the deadline in a few hours. Oh, okay. Um, Yes, take copious notes. Now, I did notice something interesting. Okay, it's a pretty straightforward layout. Ooh, we have some new characters. Oh, I remember her. Ooh, interesting. Oh, 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 yeah, Diaspora, Mariners, Highlanders, Aristocrats, okay. The Provincials, Cuisines. Oh, uh, Tolino Cultures, okay, History. The art is all from my dance troupe over the decades. I just put an oil painting filter over them. Ooh, that'll be cool. All right, now, on this sidebar, I noticed something interesting. If I go back to the regular zoom, okay, okay, well, now we have that scroll bar. Wait, let me refresh again. It was a weird zoom. Okay, I guess it's not, uh, not, we don't have that problem anymore. I thought it was too wide. Okay, now when I zoom out, the, that bar disappears. I know the floating uh, sidebar is kind of a cool thing. Uh, as, a, as a CSS trick. Um, if but if there was a way to at a normal zoom get rid of that scroll bar, I don't know if you can because even now with the scroll bar, it doesn't go all the way down until I get yeah down here because the screen height is taller than the max height I set. Okay. All right. Uh, the Ta- Talon Islands, Talon Uprising, and a map. Uh, I presume that's... Okay, we have three islands there. Okay. What'd you use to make the uh, maps? I wanted to do way more with the article, but... Ah, uh, didn't get to it. Totally understand that. All right. Okay, so Fractal Terrains 3. Okay. So because you have the article that's due later today, I will, let's try, how am I going to do this? I think I'm going to read it through once, straight through, and try to avoid getting stuck in a nitpick through that way so that I could I, I can try to get through as much of the content as possible. Please, as I'm reading, pay attention to where I flub. Meaning if I make a mistake reading something in my speed to try to get through the content, it's most likely because it kicked me out of the story. Uh, there was a grammar issue or some something of note, because 
when as I read through these articles, if I get kicked out of the story, that's when I stop and make a comment. I'm going to try not to make a comment as we go through. But if I, but if you hear me, yep, your flubbing equal my edits. It's been that way for years. <laughs> it, oh, yes. Okay, so I'm just going to read it, and then, so we'll do this in three phases. A read, a comment, and then a summary. All right. Ooh. The Tolino people originate from a tropical archipelago on the far side of the ocean. They were colonized by the Numorians on their home islands. And, okay, they were colonized by the Numorians, and their home islands were invaded by the Shark Men. Centuries of conflict and turmoil have spread their population throughout the world. Okay. We've got lots of people of Tallino descent here in the zone. I love those, them Tallinos. The food, the festivals, the singing, and the dancing. But the thing I like best are their weapons. Every time I go to Tabak Alley in Garrison City, I find some new type of sword or knife that I didn't know existed. Let me show you this headhunter's axe I just bought. I love those two. The Tolino people inhabited the so-called Talon Islands that stretch like a string of pearls south of the equator in the Talon, Talinian Ocean. They include many of the same ancestries as those in other lands, including humans, elves, gnomes, dwarf shifters, orcs, and the typical mix of inter-ancestry folk. They tend to be brown-skinned, dark-haired, and dark-eyed. Other skin tones and hair colors, both lighter and darker, can also be found among them. A long history of colonization and conflict has left traces all over the world in their bloodlines. You weren't going to include them, but I did. They've become my signature. Yeah, they kind of have. The people from these tropical islands are hardworking, funny, and sociable. They value large gatherings and call everyone family, even those not related by birth. A Tolino gathering is marked by singing, dancing, and excellent food. As islanders, they make excellent sailors. They were not an ancient nation. They were not conquerors. They weren't even a people until a scant millennium ago. Yet these upstarts hold positions of power and influence throughout the known world. Why is that? History of the Tolinos. For millennia, the islands were home to dozens of disparate tribes and city-states. The islands were rich with gold, but poor in iron. They warred amongst each other, and they raided the nations of the continent Yukau. Excuse me. In the 1500s, the explorer Don Talon Mor Moradian became the first person of, from the continent of Crozia to cross the Great Western Ocean and arrived at the fabled Pearl Islands. He and his forces conquered the islands, and he renamed them the Talon Islands and the Talinian Ocean after himself and his great accomplishment. He claimed the islands and their people for the Transoceanic Trading Company. Hundreds of years of rule by foreigners established the disparate cultures of the colonized islands into the Tolinos. Okay, that's what you mean by the oil filter. Okay. The colonizers ignored the islanders' internal distinctions, calling them all Tolinos. They imposed their own religion and ways on the newly named Tolinos. They intermarried with them, creating a hierarchy of pure Caraferans, Mestizos, and low-ranking islanders. 
people who became the Tolinos were already skilled sailors, and the company colonizers used them extensively on their ships. The songs and laughters of the islands spread everywhere that the company's ships sailed. The company's rule over the Tallinn Islands was eventually ended by the Hundred Year Sauguin War. The islands were subjugated by the Sauguin. Sorry, I'm really sorry. And the inhabitants suffered greatly under the rule of the devil worshipping shark folk. Eventually, an alliance of land-dwelling nations was able to turn the tide on the undersea-dwelling invaders. A navy of Tolino dis- diaspora, diaspora returned to their home islands and liberated the besieged survivors. Everything within reach of the ocean-dwelling monsters was despoiled, and the port cities were, ch- were car- charnel? houses. Only this, the only survivors were those who escaped to the highlands and mounted a successful de- defense against the shark men. The Transoceanic Trading Company went bankrupt without access to its trading routes and the Tolino Islands were free to self-govern once again. They formed the Sul- Sultanate of the Tallinn Islands, which has ruled the islands ever since. Centuries of colonial rule gave them the habit of hiding their true selves behind agreeable smiles. They hid their martial arts in their dances, their legends woven into their songs, their religious beliefs coated with a thin veneer of more civilized practices. Wow. I like the paragraph. Tolino Cultures. The Talon Islands, located... The Talon Islands' location made it a natural gateway for travelers from Crozier to Yukau, the Jade Continent. Their, cultures, their culture mixes aspects of the two great landmasses along with that of the many population of na- island natives. Cuisine. The archipelago of islands contains a variety of environments, Everything from tropical beaches and volcanic mountains to highland rice paddies and bustling cities. Their diet consists of rich stews, seasoned meats, and salt and vinegar marinades that keep well in the warm and humid tropics. They eat seafood, rice, pork, poultry, green vegetables, and tropical fruits like papaya, jackfruit, and banana. I'm hungry now. The Crozian influence on their diet includes a variety of dishes and desserts adapted to local ingredients. Caraboa and goat milk are used to make cheese and pastillas. Sweet potato, cassava, and rice flour are substituted for the wheat that doesn't grow on the islands. The abundance of sugarcane sweeteners the abundance of sugarcane sweetens the local desserts. Environments misspelled? I don't know. The working people of the islands, the farmers and fishers, make up the vast majority of the population. They work hard and they celebrate harder. They sing songs while working, time to the rhythm of their tasks. Every region, village, and barangay, barangay, barangay. Okay, I love the pronunciation. I would put, when you use a pronunciation guide such as this, traditionally one of the syllables need to be in all caps so that we know where the emphasis uh, lies. Typically, I believe in English speaking, by default, the second syllable gets the emphasis. Well, emphasis, emphasis. Um, like barangay. If, if it's barangay, 
then it's R-A-H would need to be capitalized because that's the default that I go to because of my language upbringing. So if it's different, like barangay, barangay, has their own traditions and festivals. You can travel the breadth of the islands, attending different fiestas and celebrations every day of the year. Before colonization, land was owned by the company. Everyone worked the land and shared in the harvest equally. When the Numorian conquerors came, they claimed all land in the name of the king. They installed a system of landed gentry and peasants. For centuries, the tough, practical-minded peasants of the islands served under harsh colonial rule. They were strictly controlled and forbidden to own weapons or learn how to fight. They hid their weapons amongst their tools and hid their fighting systems in their dances. They hid their magic in stories, songs, and artwork. Look, again, really good paragraph. I was born in a small Duende Barangue in a province far from the city. I became a Babayalan. And I moved here when I was a young woman. I get job and I send money home. One by one they follow me here until now. I have half my family here and half back home. I'm so lucky to have a big family. And they're everywhere. Oh, I totally believe that. The the Filipinos really did that? Yeah, I think that, yeah. But I just really like that you brought that out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, I, I like how you brought that out. <sighs> okay. I guess I... I, I kind of wish that was more important. I don't know. Uh, okay, got to read, got to read, got to read. The aristocrats. The influence of the Numorian colonizers has always been strongest in their capital city, St. Mayari, on the largest island, Barong. The capital was built on a site holy to the natives and made comfortable for the Numorians to remind them of home as much as possible. It had stone streets, opera houses, and grand villas similar to those in the great cities of Friel Numor and Carafar. The island human, elves, and other compatible races interbred with the colonizers. They created a middle mestizo caste, that exists in the present day. The noble ladies, the donas, wear elegant gowns woven from silk and banana leaf fibers with large butterfly sleeves on their shoulders. The men, the dons, wear transparent shirts woven from piña, pineapple fiber, with conical hats on their heads, and they carry cane swords. They value education in foreign lands, pale skin, and those who speak with a continental accent. Conflict here comes in the manned, mannered form of invitations to balls, whispered behind ornate fans, and dueling, duels with flashing blades. How does sugarcane swords flash? Isn't that usually a metal required to flash. It's not like the flashing handle, but the flashing blades. Sorry, focus. Again. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. Oh, it's a cane sword with a sword inside it. Oh, so it's a, a, like a walking cane when it's sheathed, but it's a sword if you pull it out of the scabbard. Okay, so... Okay. Uh, maybe a tool tip. Hidden... Yeah, the, yeah. Because um, when I thought of a cane sword, I was thinking more of those I don't I don't I, I don't know which culture they belong to but the wooden a wooden I don't know if it's a katana or if it's a samurai sword but it's it's just a wooden sword that is used for practice 
And so when I when you, when it said cane sword, I was literally thinking a a, a sword made out of something like a sugar cane that would would be used for practicing because they were not allowed to have weapons. Where this means, no, that's just a a weapon hidden within a cane. So maybe a tool tip on this, uh, maybe a link to a different article because, um, uh, confused. Okay, so here, Highlanders. I'm editing. Refresh when you finish this read for, through. Will do. The mountain people live far from the ocean in the highlands of the islands. These traditional folk have the distinction of never being conquered by the colonizers or the shark men. They used the remoteness of their homes and their reputations as fierce headhunters to keep their independence from any conquerors. When the shark men began to slaughter the coastal folk, the Highlanders welcomed their lowland cousins among them. They provided refuge and assistance when the time came to retake their homes along the water. The mountain tribesmen maintained vast rice terraces with complex and ancient irrigation systems. These tattooed people wear traditional clothing, loincloths, bone, bone belts, and feathered robes. They hunt for wild game and trade rice, wood, and rare spices with the lowlands. The Mariners. Everyone living on the shores of the uh, Tallinian Oceans is familiar, is, are familiar, with the sight of Tolino mariners. They wear brightly colored silks and are covered in gold jewelry, a practical way to carry their pay. They carry armories of bladed weapons and are covered in tattoos, magical and otherwise. They are known as excellent sailors who can sing a song, throw a knife, steal your spouse while leaving you with a smile on your face. <laughs> Uh, there are entire societies of Tolino mariners who live on the ocean, never setting foot on dry land for years. They trade between their home islands and travel everywhere that the ocean that shares their name touches. They fill the crews of every merchant, pirate, and explorer ship on every body of water in the world. Cool. Oh, a wedding ceremony. Influence in di Diaspora. Centuries of colonization and conflict have carried the Tolinos around the world. Wherever they go, they bring their culture and their cuisine with them. They claim anyone with a drop of Tolino blood is their own. Tolinos live living abroad in the Diaspora are all encouraged to make the pilgrimage home at some point. When they arrive, they are given warm welcomes and encouraged to spend as much of their hard-earned money as possible. They tell young diaspora Tolinos that an island-born Tolino spouse is the perfect gift to bring back home with them. Much of the traffic from foreign lands back to the Talon Islands comes in the form of currency sent back home by Tolinos working abroad to support their families back home. I have Tolino blood, mostly from my mother's side. Even though our ancestors come to Lozar as refugees, as refugees centuries ago, we still consider ourselves Tolino. I have only been to the home islands once as a young man. I felt like it felt like going home. I long to return, but my duties have not allowed it. Interesting. Interesting. Wow. Well, it's, you know, one thing I love about your world's kit is I don't know where reality starts and stops. You blend, uh, you, you, you blend it together. And so I really don't know. Um, yeah, I, 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 yeah, and see, I'd, I'd like that because I feel like 
I'm getting a civics, an enjoyable civics lesson every time I read uh, one of your articles that are, are tied within your heritage. Okay, so, all right, we have the introduction. Yeah, we have, it's interesting that um, the, so you can be a Tolino human, a Tolino elf, a Tolino norm, gnome, a Tolino dwarf, a Tolino shifter, and a Tolino orc. Um, oh, and it's a, I think it's a great secondary goal. Yes, this cr creates a fantastic in-depth article that sucks into it. Okay. They, they, they tend to be brown-skinned, dark-haired, dark-eyed. Okay, I'm a little confused about the they you're referring to. Because, again, my Earth-centric brain... Um, I'm assuming only the humans have the variation in... Uh, in, in, in skin color. Um, do the Tolino elves look different than the elves from the other parts of the world? Do the orcs, are the or orcs also browner and the other ones like Sergeant Killflayer are greener? No, so I'm, I'm a little confused at where the variation, because you just say, the dark skin, dark hair, dark eyes. I just don't know if that's encompassing or limited to the humans. Again, okay, in your comment, they follow the dark brown skin, black hair thing. Wh which they? Like all of them? Because this may sound weird, but with the... With the more common acceptance of the singular they, especially when you are dealing with individuals of mixed identity, it, it makes the word they a little difficult to use because, and it, um, it has blurred the definition of the word they. 15, 20, 30 years ago, they had a very different and more singular purpose than the word they has today. And, um, and so I, they has definitely become harder to parse. Yeah. So we need to be very careful when using the word they, and, and it may be a little bit more cumbersome at, it may not flow as well, but if you're seeking for clarity, the use of nouns over the use of pronouns may be, uh, may help with the clarity. Okay, uh, that was fun. I, okay, I really like this Elf King quote here. Uh... The history, okay, this, yeah, I, okay, good. The continent, you cow. I'm guessing this is more your Chinese, Japanese influence because you're using the term jade. And if I think, uh, you know, when I think jade, I think China. The Elf King has become my stand-in for jerks. <laughs> okay, Don, okay, West, across the Great Western Ocean. Yu Chow. Okay. Uh, da, 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 okay. You know, if you had a picture of uh, Don Talon, because here you have a picture of the Highlander couple. But down here with... Oh, you do have a high, that Highlander. Okay. Okay, let me step out a little bit farther and talk about what I like about the article. Okay. 
It has a good introduction. It, it tells us a little bit about it. The three quotes from the NPCs help give us insight into the people and the, the situation they are in currently. Um, I, I really do appreciate the, the um, racial explanations here that it is not... Because I don't... Um, I don't like how um, elves, orcs, dwarves, I don't like how a race and culture have become the same thing traditionally. I like the idea of you can have elves, you can still be an elf, but you're of a different culture. I like the idea that you can have dwarves, but you're... Polynesian dwarf and your Nordic dwarf are completely different. Um, I I think culture is is more important than genetics. If I can say that, if if, if you're, I I don't I don't want to feel like I'm treading on thin ice, but I sometimes feel like I have to tread on thin ice trying to make people of different races slash ancestries be parts of ethnicity and culture. Yeah, because, you know, that's correct. I'm Filipino by blood, by, but American by culture. Yes, and I think, personally, uh, I think what you are culturally is much more impactful in your life than your blood heritage. Duchess of Tea, thanks. Catch you later. And so I, I really like how here you are trying to make that distinction. That this is, the Tolino is a culture. The Tolino, the, the people of Tolino can be of any different r racial background. And... Uh, yeah, I like that. The history, really good use of the histories here. Uh, I'm, I'm sensing a lot of the Filipino history incorporated in here. Um, the Trans-Oceanic Trading Company, how he just renamed it, and the forcing of the Tolinos. I think it was really interesting how they discouraged the subcultures within the, I mean, they treated, they just grouped everybody into a same uniform, not really there, not existing thing, and just called them that, as a, as opposed to uh, accepting and understanding that they were of different cultural backgrounds. I try and don't always succeed to use the word ancestry instead of race in my world building. Okay, yeah, and see, that's one thing that is, uh, you know, in the D&D &D world and in the human world, you know, the, 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 the distinction between uh, race and the distinction between ancestry is a lot different because, you know, in D&D, &D, a race is orc, elf, dwarf, human, where here in, in this world, uh, we're all human. And I don't know, I just, if there was some other way to get rid of the word race to describe people of different ancestry, because we're not a different race, we're all hom homo sapiens. We're all human. We're not different races. You know? I, again, thin ice. I just, I just wish there was... Yep, that's a whole discussion going on in D&D &D space right now. I usually go for species instead of race and their ancestry for my cultures. Okay, and see, that's a good distinction, too, because uh, the new word that I learned from Kidopoi, 
that I l really like is the word softened. Uh, the, the word softened, and I'm still trying to <clears throat> understand it correctly, is an intelligent humanoid. But then again, bunnies are softens. Intelligent creatures. You know, you... Yeah. Yeah, the softened word. Also, species is technically correct name in biology for what we consider different races in D&D. That's right. <clears throat> and I like the word softened because that means uh, someone with whom it has uh, intelligence and self-awareness. And it's a, I think it's a good word to because there's a difference between a, um, a softened bunny and a non-soffit bunny. And, or, are they the same species? I don't know. But one's intelligent. I don't know. And see, and, and I do see, this is one challenge, I believe, that you have, Katoipoi, with this, is that you have, because you're mixing so closely with the concepts of, of race, of species, of ancestry in these articles, is that it's hard to th think in the concepts of D and D definitions of those words versus the the English real world definition of those words, and so that is a challenge. Biological differences can lead to interesting implications, and that's what I go off of. Dentists that specialize in orc tusks. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I There's this Facebook uh, meme that I think is hilarious. If you travel to another world and you need health care, go visit a veterinarian, not a doctor. Doctors deal with the softens, the, maj the, ma the, maj the major softent of the world. Veterinarians deal with everything else. So uh, if you're ever traveling to another world, don't see the doctors, see the vets. <laughs> um, I'm, I, and I'm talking about different people. Oh, I talk about mortals in places where you would use mankind or humankind in our world. Ah, mortals. Interesting. Yeah, mortals. I do love the use of softens in my world building. When they get an ocean in the Colonel Pit, they talk to dolphins and whales to get permission to pull resources. That's right. A softened whale, a softened dolphin. Uh, yeah. I've also started use, using mortals a lot. I use word sapient because I cannot spell softened off the top of my head. Oh, but that's good too. I do like, oh yeah, safent. Okay. All right, so back here. I really liked this uh, quote by Tazi Azadid, the unbeliever. Uh, I Yeah, it was just a really good paragraph. Okay. Uh, the cultures, the gateway. Okay, cuisine. Yep. Provincials, okay. Farmers and fishermen, thank you. Okay, you fixed the fishermen. Uh, provincials. Aristocrats, huh? mariners. Okay, provincials. I saw your eye twitch with fishers. Yep, you're yeah, you caught that. Uh okay. Vast majority of the work hardest celebrity, yeah. Okay. So these are your default characters. Provincials are default characters. They are the standard by which everything else is compared to. I didn't want to use pe peasants as a title. Good choice. Okay. Okay. The aristocrats. Because 
I like this being the first one because this is the majority of the people that you have here. And they, and then every other culture, sorry, every other class or caste is then compared against the provincials. So this is your default. And then the aristocrats, how they are different from is because the uh, Numorian. Yep, put them in that order on purpose. Very good. Um, would the mestizos be their own section or is, is there not? Okay. Because I can see you have your, your provincials and you have your aristocrats, but are the mestizos, do they... Are they treated the same as the aristocrats? Or I, I, I just don't know how significant they are to make them their own thing. They're with the aristocrats on purpose, but that's a good distinction. Okay. Because um, from my study of history, uh, the mestizos were definitely not liked or not seen as equal to the more pure-blooded, oh, hate that word, uh, the aristocrats. There's a discussion about mestizos. My kids are technically mestizo, but it's probably an entire article on its own. Ah, yeah. Yeah. And just because there's, yeah, and is, is mestizo a biological distinction or a cultural distinction? Okay, so, and, and see that, um, because half-elves, half-orcs, those are mestizos, if I'm, un if I'm understanding the, the term correctly, is that, a, and I've seen how, um, I like, like I could get into half, yeah, oh, you're right there with me, okay, excellent, yeah, um, because I've, again, sorry to refer to, uh, critical role so much, I go back to what I know, Vex and Vax, uh, the twins from campaign one, they were shunned, from the full-blooded elf city because of their mother and they were half-elves. They were treated as outcasts, as mestizos. And so uh, that I just think that is interesting. The uh, uh, thing that could get you get in, into, but definitely in a different article. Um, also, funny enough, I don't like how we always assume that the half in the elf or half in the orc is human. I mean, an orc and an elf could propagate. Okay, Highlanders. Okay, I, I did like this. And I liked how it was, you, you gave them the distinction. You're talking, and again, you define them as different from the... Uh, provincials. Um, oh yeah, that brought mestizos in. They brought mestizos into the ruling class as a lower class, but as an administrative class to be over the peasants. Oh, hey, that would be a great distinction that much like in England, you have the House of Lords and you have the House of Commons you or you could have the mesti uh, the mestizos are limited to a lower house or only allowed in the bureaucracy whereas elected officials oh this is going to be terrible but is there a race requirement to be an elected official i don't know um yeah again yeah huge yeah mestizos I mean, because parents love their kids. I really hope parents love their kids. And despite of what heritage or what ancestry 
has mixed together um, that the mestizos are given more. I mean, they, they're not the jerks that you're referring to, the, the high elf. That, I mean, if you love a person of a different ancestry sufficient to marry and uh, procreate with them, then at least you are would love your children enough to help them as much as you can, even if that means giving them a job in the bureaucracy as opposed to sending them off in the fields. Of course there are going to be jerks. Of course there is going to be uh, forced relations, uh, forced deliveries, if you know what I mean. Okay? Of course there's going to be um, abhorrent things of that nature. And I can see those being shunted out and discarded. But hopefully the decency of the parent. I, okay. Wow. How many landmines can I tiptoe around in one article critique? Thanks, Kit. I really appreciate it. Okay, but yeah, there... I. You only have a couple hours to submit this, so don't. <laughs> I don't want you to uh, get too overly. The Mariners, yep. Uh, I'd like to know more about these shark people. Um, you you know never. Influence and diaspora. I. Okay, all spread throughout this article, you are referring to the cultures, the uh, uh, the Yukau, Yukau, Yukau Island. You've been talking about the Nemorian colonizers. We've talked about the 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 Sea Wolf, um, the no, not Sea Wolf, Man Shark. I would like to see the influence and diaspora section have a section for each of those three three things so that if we wanted to learn, if we wanted to know more about the specific influence on it, instead of having to read all of the articles about each of the different cultures, that you would then you chow. Okay, you chow. Um, then we would say, okay, this is how the shark man impacted them. This is how the trading company impacted them. This, and you could have that information. There might be slight repetition, but it would be more concentration there at the end under the di diaspora. And you may, if that is the situation, if you, I would then split influence, its subheaders, and diaspora into a section a separate section because um i think the, the the i love the concept that you have of a diaspora and how that um the diaspora brings people back together but yeah i just don't know how well they pair up together there's so much in in there um One challenge is that cuisine here is at the same level of the provincials, the aristocrats. Um, I go over the word count. I'm seventeen hundred now, but limit is two k. Yeah, it's a ch it's a challenge here that I'd almost move quiz cuisine into influences. Because cuisine is the one thing that's not like the others. Cuisine is not, not a provincial, not an aristocrat, not a Highlander, not a mariner. Cuisine is its own thing. And so I would... Yeah, I would move it down under influences. And then... Um, at, and then whether you keep... Cuisine separate from the three cultures. Not that the shark men have impacted the cuisine of the people, unless 
people have wanted to eat more shark. I mean, a shark fin soup. I mean, is that is that? I mean, you're hinting at the the mountain people be slightly being cannibalistic, but I mean, is that too disturbing? If shark fin soup, which is a real thing, is a has invade has has influenced their culture because of their their hatred for shark man has led them to love shark fin soup. Again, that's what that, that's a weird thing when you get into these, you know, what's considered cannibal, cannibalism? Is it is eating any other softened or sapient a cannibal? What happens if you a human eats an orc? What happens if or orcs eat humans? Orcs eats elves. Is that considered cannibalism? Again, you would need to define that. If you remember, I had to make no eating softens rule in the zone. Okay, so then you can you could tease that also in here that there isn't that rule. They very much like eating shark fin soup as a warning sign, as a you better not come back here or you'll be soup. Yeah, interesting stuff. Um, I would, re okay, so then I would also recommend taking an article, uh, copying, pasting it into a Grammarly or something like that to help do other, other thing, any of the many stuff that you may be missing. Uh, I re recommend reading it out loud again. Uh, but I, the trick that I like about reading out loud is if you read from the bottom to the top one sentence at a time. Because as you read things, you get in the flow, you get into the narrative, and you may miss something. But if you read the story, the either at a sentence level or a paragraph level, from the bottom to the top, it breaks your brain's ability to uh, put in words that aren't there or misread words that are there because you're not... Um, because you're not thinking of the story. Your, our brains are wonderful creations that will allow us to skip over, to fill in the blanks, to skip problems. And, yeah. I can rearrange it and do edits for readability, but I shouldn't make major additions now. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, reading from the bottom is, I think, a really good thing. Awesome. Uh, okay, so let's get into a review of the article. Awesome. Uh, yes. Um, Kit, I really, I really like your articles. I really like the the influ the mixture of human and fan Earth and fantasy. I really like that mixture. I feel that I learn a lot from it. Uh, I. I did not feel that anything was boring in this in this article. I think it was all important. The the challenge is the, your two thousand word limit, because I think you're going in a lot of great content. Um, confused? Well, there are your you. You heard me when I I stumbled. You heard me when. I caught sometimes there was mispronunci mispronunciations of the new words that were made up for the world, for the countries. You know, that's to be expected. Uh, tool tips would be great for that if you have the time to do it. The, oh yeah, this could be totally broken out into separate articles. Um, delete. Food is so important to a culture. However, if you're pushing up to a word limit, I think food would be the first thing to go. Because unless it's like the paragraph that you have there, you know, it's mostly rice, uh, you know, 
these spices, stuff like it's it's seafood, rice, it's sometimes that, you know, maybe delete the, the but I would much rather see you expand the cuisine, expand the influences section down there at the bottom where we have the influences, uh, you know, this cr group brought in these recipes, but it was substituted with rice because there's no wheat. This group brought in this. We now eat this group because they attacked us. Um, I think those are great things, but where you're pushing the 2000 word limit, uh, that could be a challenge. But yeah, this was, it was, it's a really good article. I don't have a lot to say. I'm not sure if this form of feedback worked well where I read it through and I go back. I'm not sure if that this is as good of a format, but I, w I really did want to make it through everything so I could have a large contextual thing because Grammarly, Pro Writing Aid, a grammar checker, those things can help you with the nitty gritty stuff. But yeah, um, but I think it was, uh, yeah, and we, we did get a little di uh, a little sidetracked by the discussion of race and um, species and softens and stuff like that. Um, I think that was really good. Yeah. Okay, so thank you so much, uh, Katoi Poi, for all of this. I really appreciate it. And your willingness to share this article. Best of luck. Um, I don't know how soon you have to turn in this article, but after you've turned in the article, this video will be for review on YouTube. <laughs> I'd like it as an option on the read-through submission for it. I really like the way you went through it. Oh... Could you send me a rem could you send me a, a reminder? I have an hour and twenty one minutes. Yeah, I'm 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 not going to be able to get that done. Okay, so uh, go ahead and uh, if you could send me a ping with our uh, new option critique style uh, integrated versus multiple passes. Okay. I, I th yeah, okay. Got that written down. Okay, so thank you so much, everyone, uh, for being here and watching this article, uh, this fiction critique. If you would like to have your content run through the ring, gone through the ringer like uh, Katoi Poi was willing to do, please visit wgc.bz slash submit for more information and more uh, chances to submit it. Thank you. Have a great day. And until next time, keep on writing. Thanks for watching this feedback frenzy. Be sure to show your support by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and clicking the notification bell. Writer Greg offers coaching sessions to help bring your world to life, create compelling stories, and accomplish your creative goals. Please visit wgc.bz coaching for more details.